Okay, good morning. What did we, what did we discuss last time? Anyone? We were talking about some. Definitely, we discussed some, right? What is it? Uniform composition and quantity. I took a picture. That's not going to work. What did we discuss last time? Nothing? Yeah, we were talking about amplitude modulation. No, no, no. Post code modulation. Post code. How to convert the... We are talking uh, about PAM, PW, and PPM. Uh, that is the middle, at the very beginning. Okay, the major part <laughs> is PCM <laughs> encoding. That, that's what uh, talking about. How to do PCM encoding? How to convert a discrete value into a digital value? Anyone still remember that? Can you tell me? How to convert a discrete value into a digital value? D. AD conversion, analog to digital. Anyone want to try? Which one is it again? Discrete values converted into digital values. Into digital values. Mm -hmm. Oh, you have to just do the little formula. Uh, last time we discussed the PCM. If we have an analog uh, eh, signal and we sample this, for example, we get this one here, and we want to convert this discrete value into PCM code, what we do is uh, first of all, we need to know the n bit, how many bit of uh, the PCM code. Once we know the n, then the number of levels will be equal to 2 to the n. And from this error, and we know the r, what is r? It's two oh, it's over two in what, what do we call? What is the unit of all that unit of power the, uh, not power? What's the term for this? Receiving resolution. Resolution. Right? Resolution equals uh is two A over two. Two A over two N <laughs> minus I uh, minus one or uh, approximately maybe just two N. So that's why we have e equals A uh, divided by to the n minus one. Yeah. And once we get the resolution, what's next? We get the value here, suppose this is x. The discrete value x is divided by the resolution. Then we get some uh, some numbers, for example, 1, 2, 3, 1, 4, 5. And we get some, suppose we get some numbers like this. Then what's next? We round this to an integer. So this one approximately equals 1, 2, 3. Yeah. And this is uh, 1 to 3 is a decimal, right? Then we convert this one into a binary, right? So we get some, some numbers into some number, okay, in binary, in B. So that is called PCM code. Okay. <coughs> this process is called a linear uh, quantization. Why it's called linear? Because when we divide by R, we assume uniform resolution. Uh, no matter the signal is small, like here, or the signal is large, like here and here, we use the same <coughs> resolution. The question for this one is, uh, we know the L is, uh, for example, if your number is here, if your value is here, then you either run to this or run to this. Right? So this difference here is the L. If you use uniform quantization, when the signal is small, the error will be equal to when the signal is, is uh, when the signal is large, the error will be equal to when the the error when the equal the uh, when the equal is small. Right? The errors will be the same, but uh, the value will be different. Uh, the, uh, so that means the signal to noise ratio or signal to discretization error SDR, this one will be equal to uh, signal the value divided by the error. The error will be the same because the resolution is the same. But the signal can be large, can be small. So that means this signal to noise ratio will be large for large signal. When x is large, for large x. 
And this sigma to load ratio will be small for small sigma. My x is large, this one is large. My x is small, this is small. Right? That means having this to this this criticization around this part, the signal to noise ratio is very bad. It's very low. Right? For large signals, okay, that is pretty good. The signal to noise ratio is large. So this one gives us a problem. So usually when the signal uh, the small uh, the signal is small, we want this one signal to noise ratio not that small. So what we do is uh, we are going to use a non-uniform. Non-uniform discretization. Quantization. Oh. Non-uniform quantization means when the signal is large, the resolution will be large. When the signal is small, the resolution will be small. The resolution is small, that means the error is small. So for large signals, x is large, then the error will be large. For small signals, when x is small, the resolution is small, so the error is small. So we keep this uh, signal to noise ratio a little bit uniform. Right? So this will improve the signal to noise ratio for small signals. Uh, so uniform uh, for large x. We are going to use a large resolution. For small x, we are going to use a small resolution. And this large resolution gives us a, a smaller signal to noise ratio compared to the uniform quantization. And the smaller r gives us a larger give a large larger as an R compared to uniform resolution. Any question on this? So that is the purpose why we want to use a <coughs> non-uniform quantization. If we use non-uniform quantization, we are going to have a more complicated procedures, uh, a more computational cost. But the benefit is uh, we can improve the signal to noise ratio for small signals. And when the, si the signal is small, usually we want to have better, a better quality, right? Otherwise, all, the signal is already small. So we want the error to be small. Right? So we still have the reasonable signal to noise ratio. That is the purpose. Is there any questions on this? Another advantage is uh, if the signal is large, when the, if we use a uniform quantization uh, for large signals and for small signals, this dynamic range will be large. Anyone still remember what dynamic range is? Dynamic range is the largest value divided by the smallest value. Uh, the largest, the maximum, the max divided by the mean. So dynamic range for uniform, this one will be large for uniform. For uniform quantization. And this one will be small for non-uniform. How to understand this? Right? I'll give you an example. For example, you can make some grid, right? The highest is 100. Uh, the raw data is the highest, is the max is 100. And the mean is, for example, 50. Uh, let, let's do something else. Uh, like this one. The highest is, uh, let me make, make, make up some, uh, the highest is 50, the minimum is 25. Uh, so that's the raw data. I want to curve this. Why is I use a linear or uniform quantization? That means everybody times two. 
Right. So the maximum will be changed from 50 into 100, the, uh, the maximum. The minimum will be changed, will change from 25 to 50. What is the dynamic range before the curve? Uh, all others will be in between. You have, have 40, you have 30 or something. What's the dynamic range for this state? Two, right? Dynamic range equals the max divided by the dynamic range equals uh, two, the maximum divided by the minimum. After the curve, what is the dynamic range? After the uniform curve or linear curve, or it's a uniform quantization in this example. What is dynamic range after the curve? Still two, right? Because everybody, every score is multiplied by two, constant. Like this. Does that make sense? Okay, now I will use the non-uniform curve. Right? That means this is uniform. Non-uniform means uh, if your score is large, I will multiply by a factor that is small. If your score is small, then I will multiply by a factor that is a lot, so give you more curve on this one. So for example, on this one, still multiply by two, so I get 100. But this one, I will, for example, multiply by three. And this one will multiply by three, give you same one. And if this one multiply by two, this one multiply by three. Any numbers in between will be multiplied by a number larger than two, but smaller than three. So this Factor will not be uniform. Does it make sense to you? If you are good, I just multiply by two. If you are small, then I keep multiplying by three. If you are in the middle, I may multiply by two point five or something. Right. So now, what is the dynamic range for this one? One hundred over seventy-five. So that will be equal to one point three. So this nonlinear curve will reduce the dynamic range. That means the maximum is not that large compared to the smallest. In this case, only 1.3 times, and this one is two times. But we do not change the order. Right? If you are better than me here, you are still better than me here. Does that make sense? If you're number one in the class, after the curve, you still must be number one in the class. If you are on the bottom, after the curve, you still must be on the bottom. And we cannot change into other, otherwise that's not fair. Does that make sense? But the only thing we change is we change the dynamic range. That means the difference between the maximum and the minimum is not that large. It's not like twice, but it's only 1.3 times. So that is called non-uniform. Uh, this same thing is similar to this uh, non-uniform quantization. When the signal is large, I will give it uh, a small factor. If you call gain. When the signal is large, it's small, we are going to give it as a larger gain. Make it a little bit larger, relative. So that is not uniform. So we can see after the non-linear, uh, non-uniform quantization, the dynamic range will be reduced. Right? That means we can transmit some high definition signal with a low dynamic range of the channel. Uh, yes, still in this example, the dynamic range equals tau equals two. If some channel, the dynamic range can only, for example, 1.5. If the channel, communication channel, dynamic range equals 1.5. That means if we want to transmit this 100, then we cannot transmit this 50 because it's too low, huh? beyond this dynamic range. Or if you manage to transmit this 50, then you cannot transmit this one. You are going to get this distortion. For example, you have the um, AV equipment at home, right? You can play small signals very good, but if you turn the volume very high, then you can hear the distortion. Right? So there's a small, smallest signal, there's a maximum this signal. If you beyond this level, then you are going to have distortion. So that level range gives us a dynamic range. Suppose the channel is only 1.5, then we cannot transmit the data, the raw data, because the dynamic range equals 2. But after the compression or uniform, a non-uniform quantization, the dynamic range will be reduced to 1.3, then we can perfectly transmit them with this channel. Does that make sense?
But as we said, you have 100, you have 50, this one converted to 100, this one converted into 75. We know this is not true data, right? Not like in the curve. In curve, okay, we just use 175. But in this case, in the data, after at the receiver, we still want the original data. So we need to convert this one back into the 100 and this one back into the original 50. So this is called a compression, this is called expansion. Right? Okay, any question on this uh, uh, on this uh, concept? The non-uniform quantization. So when will you need to use the compression or expansion? If you, we said at least here we have two situations that we need to use a non-uniform quantization. The first one is we want to increase the signal to noise ratio for small signals. Because the signal is already small. If your error is large, then the signal to noise ratio is very bad. So that is, uh, we are going to have very bad quality communication. So for small signals, you want to increase, for small signals, uh, you want to increase the signal to noise ratio. So we, in this case, we are going to use a non-uniform quantization. That's the first situation. The second one is, uh, if your channel dynamic range is small compared to your original data, that means you cannot transmit properly. Uh, before the transmission, we are going to use a non-uniform quantization to compress the dynamic range. Then we can transmit. Uh, at the receiver, then we need to use expansion to get back the original data. So at least we have these two situations. That means we need to utilize non-uniform quantization. Okay? Any questions on this? Uh, the benefit of this uh, compression and, and expansion, uh, we need to know how this tool is uh, we are going to minimize the crosstalk between, between the cables. Suppose we have this cable here, uh, we transmit the signal. The maximum, of the, if the dynamic range is large, the maximum equals 100, the minimum equals 50, then we may have a crosstalk between the channels. If we reduce the dynamic range, the maximum equals 100, the minimum equals 75, all these data are very close, it's almost uniform, then the crosstalk between the channels will be minimized. So that's it. Uh, and also, for small signals, uh, we said that we see, uh, uh, we increase the signal to noise ratio, or we reduce the quantization error. Now the question is, uh, how to compress a data? How I do this curve? In uniform, I just multiply by two. Every score just multiply by two. That's easy, right? But for this non-uniform curve or non-uniform quantization, the maximum multiply two, the minimum multiply three. How about in any number in between? How do I choose that factor? You look at this. For example, we know this is one. This curve. What is this curve? Looks like it's a logarithmic, right? Right. This is the x. This is the log, this is y equals log x. Look at this. The gain, the value of y divided by the value of x. For small signals, so the y divided by x. If we take the limit, that will be the slope. Delta y or delta x, that will be the slope. When we take the limit, and delta approaches equal to zero. So this is the slope. For small signals, for large signals, this slope is uh, this is small, this is large. The slope here, which one has a larger slope of these two? The smaller. One. So this one has a large slope. This one has a small. So, and you can see the slope will be. Uh, 
monotonically decreasing, right? There will be no change like this. Right? If your value is larger, I can guarantee your slope will be smaller. So we are going to utilize this concept. Right? The gain of this logarithmic will give us a very good example of non-uniform compression. So we are going to use this one. Definitely we can use math, math, math formula to do this, but in labs, for example, how are you going to use this one? Uh, I'll give you a value, you are going to implement this one, get a y. This is a raw data, this one is compressed. What are you going to use inside, in this box? Convolution. Convolution? <coughs> uh, what are you going to use in this, uh, you go to the lab, you implement this algorithm. Log, log. So what are you going to utilize here? Logarithmic amplifier. <coughs> the output will be equal to the input. So that's very easy to implement. Use a logarithmic device or formula. Basically, we have two algorithms to do this, to do this uh, compression, analog compression. The first one, we go analog compression. Analog compression means we compress the data when the data is discrete value. We, once we get this x, last semester, uh, sorry, last class, we said this one equals, uh, what's the value for this one? We use the example over there. What's the value for this? You didn't review the lecture notes. What is it? What's the number we used in the example last time? 8.6. Uh, Two degrees. Okay, something, right? It was, see, I can only memorize after this one, right? Yeah. And we convert this one into PCM is a six, right? We said it equals one, one, zero, right? Yeah. It's four digits, so it's one, one, zero. Yeah. If we compress the data at this stage, we compress here, that is called analog compression, because this value looks is analog. All this discrete, but it's analog value. So we compress it here. But if you compress this value, then we do this PCM <coughs> encoding. This is called analog compression. The digital compression is yes, we just take this value, then <coughs> encode this. Once we get the digital, we compress this value instead of this. So this is called a digital compression. Today we are going to discuss analog compression and expansion. Next time we are going to discuss digital compression and digital expansion. So that's the difference between this and next time. Right? So analog compression applied directly to this uh, discrete value. Uh, we have a new law and we have a A law. Basically we have these two types. The new law right, usually use the North American here and also in Japan. And A law mostly used in Europe. And if a communication channel is between two countries that use different laws, different algorithms, then everybody needs to use A law. Any question on that? Right, now we discuss the details. What is mu law? What is A law? How to compress with these two laws? The mu law is the y, y is the output of the compression, or is the compressed value. y equals fgn m, fgn means sine. Eh? You know this before, right? For example, sine 3 equals, uh, take the sine of this 3. What is it? Positive, right? Means positive value. 
What is the sign of a negative 4? The sign equals negative, right? Okay, so that equals negative. So the sign means that you take the function and take the sign of this variable. Right? Either a positive one. For positive number, it is positive one. For negative numbers, it is a negative one. For zero, then it's equals zero, right? So this is the sign of the, this one is the compressed. This one is the input. This is the original. Uh, this is the odd compressed the odd. And this sign times MP, MP is the peak value of the input. Peak of the input. Uh, peak of the input. And divided by log, natural log, 1 plus mu. Right? This mu is this mu log. What is mu? Mu is a constant. Right? Uh, you, are, you are given this one. For example, mu equals 255. Then multiply by log, natural log, 1 plus mu, still the same constant, times the absolute value of the input that we, we want to compress, then divided by the peak value. Again, also peak value must be positive. Any question on that? Are we clear about every quantity here? Right? We are given, for example, this uh, x. Right? This is x is, is m in that formula. That is the value we want to compress. And mp is the maximum. In the last example, what is the mp? In the example last time? What is the maximum peak value of the input data? In the last example? 10, right? Yeah. This is 10, right? So that means this MP equals 10. And mu will be given, for example, 255. Right? So we know this, we know this, we know this, and everything is known. Right? So we can give us a number that we can compress it to get the output. That's it. Very simple. Right? This is uh, uh, the compression. At the input, you give me an M, I compress it, then I transmit. At the receiver, you receive this one, which is the compressed value, you need to expand. So the expand value will be the M, because we receive this one. Right? So this is at the transmitter. Uh, this one is the, at the transmitter. This one at the receiver. We want to expand the value. Right? For example, 100, expand back to 100. 75, expand back to 50. So M will be equal to the sign of Y. Positive, that means if Y is positive, that means this equals 1. If Y equals negative, then this one is negative. Then times MP. What is MP? Right? In the example is 10, that's the peak value of the original of this. Then, <laughs> divided by mu and uh, times 1 plus mu to the power of y over mp, then minus 1. At the receiver, we are going to receive the compressed value of y. Then, we know mp, we know the mu, and everything is known here. Then. We can come. Uh, we can expand the, the data. Right. So that is the uh, mu law at the uh, for the expansion. Any questions? It's good. All right. The next law is E law. E law is very similar to this, but with a little bit uh, small compression. So E law will be M 
at the transmission m equals uh, the sine of y so the sine of m then times uh, mp a and m over mp then times 1 plus log a <coughs> if m over mp is less than 1 plus log a if m the value we want to compress divided by the peak value is less than this, again, A is the constant, right? A is the parameter, A lot, A is a given. If this one is less than this, then the compressed value will be the sine of M times MP, then times M over MP, then um, times this and over A. Right? And if the M is larger than this, 1 plus log a less than or equal to over 1. The maximum of this ratio can only be 1, right? When m equals peak. So this one will be equal to sine m times mp. I believe there's, there's an e here, okay? That's, there must be e here. Uh, e to the power of m over mp and uh, 1 plus log a here yeah. m minus 1 divided by constant a. So we need to uh, separate two situations. If this ratio is less than this constant, because A is the given, then we we'll use this formula. If A is uh, larger than or equal to this value and less than one, or other situation, we are going to use the different formula. And we are going to have a similar uh, expansion uh, at, the, at the receiver, then we are going to have a similar. Uh, so we don't uh, bother to list the here, it's in the slide. Uh, now we are going to use an example to show how use a law how to compress how to expand these values. Uh, sorry, not a law. A law. We this we do not discuss a law. The procedures are the same for both of us, right? So we are going to use a mu law as an example. Suppose we have a value input the maximum value equals a 4 volt and uh, we are going to consider This is the input. When the input equals the max, means equals 4, and we use a mu equals 255. We use mu 255. That means mu 255. This is all to compress the data. The data looks like this. Right? The maximum equals 4 here. And we are going to compress the 4 input. The first one is the maximum. The next one is uh, right? this one equals 1, this one equals 2, this one equals 3. So, for example, our sampling is like this here, this here, this here, and this here. We sample this data, and we get 1 volt, 2 volts, 3, and 4. And we want to compress this 1, 2, 3, 4. To see what is the compressed data. Is this clear? What we are doing? 
Okay, we start with the first one, the input equals the maximum value. Let's see how this maximum four will be compressed. How to do this? Can you do this? Right, everybody get a calculator and do this. What is the output? The output at the compression. Everything you need to know is on the board. Eh? You only need a calculator or maybe a pen to calculate what is the output of the compression. compression. We use a mu 255 to compress this data. All right, somebody get second one? You don't even need to calculate. Right? What is it? So you're not using that formula? You look at this, mm -hmm. eh? we are going to use this formula to compress it, right? Mm -hmm. M equals what? M is the input we want to compress. What is M? Four, four right? What's the sign of a four? What's this part? Positive one, right? Only take the sign. If the value equals positive, then this one equals uh, one. If the value equals negative, this one equals negative one. That's the only thing you need to remember. Okay, so this one equals one, right? Log this one 256. This one is MP. What is MP? 15. 15. 10. That is in the original example. In this example, MP equals 4, right? So this is a 4, this has a log 256. What is M absolute value? 4, right? What is MP? 4, right? They cancel. What is this one? 255 plus 1, 256. Log 256. What is this? Log 256. This and this will cancel. So this one, nothing, nothing here. We have only positive MP. What is it? Get four. Alright? Everybody get four? So this one here, the output of the compressor equals four. So that means if you get 100 off of the curve, you still get 100. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay, now suppose your score is uh, three. Eh? After the curve, uh, after the compression, what do you get? And we have some value waiting for the second one and the third one. And looks like this, you need to calculate. This is very simple, right? It is simple, right? We show here, but you need to do be able to do by yourself. Any 
any second? 3.79. 3 right? I need another one, get this number, then we call. I cannot wait to all of you, right? We got the first one, second one. Who's the next one? Three point six seven? Three point seven nine, right? Right? Three point seven nine. Yes? Six seven or seven nine? Seven nine. Seven nine, okay? So three point seven nine. That means if your score is a three, then after the curve you got three point seven nine. Alright, the next one is two. What what the value output uh, at the compressor after for this two. Alright? We have one value here. Again, I need two. Two more. 2.5. 2.5. You calculate this or you how you calculate this? I did, I did. You didn't? Then you can do this. 3.5. You guess or what? Don't guess. Alright? 3.5. I need the next one. To confirm 3.5 is correct or is wrong. Three one five. Three one five. All right. This one three one five. Now for the last one, I need uh, three more. All right. Except you, except you. Then we need another three more to do this. What is the output of to be compressed one? You need to use calculator. I cannot imagine that you can calculate this in your brain. Three point. That is the, the next one. All right, the last one. Three point what? Two point nine nine seven. Okay, that's three point zero, right? Alright, we got one more. Alright, three point zero. I need the second and the third. Second? 2.99. 2.99. 2.99. You got this, right? And next one? Third? 2.99. 2.99. Okay, that's the three. Right? So I believe, I hope everybody can do this, right? Okay, now everybody gets a piece of paper. We have a quiz. You do this expansion. Right? We have four questions. So here, we have an input. That is a four, and this is called a compressor, and we have a, we get this value here, and then the next one at the receiver, you are going to this expand this value, right? Like in the test, this is the D curve, right? After the curve, then we need the D curve, right? So this is like expansion. What is the output for this? One? So four is compressed to four. We know that you already know how to calculate it. Now, as the receiver, you need to expand this four into, uh, what is this? Okay. You calculate this, and for four, for three, for two, for one, you do all this. This one equals 3.79, this one equals 3.5, this one equals 3.0. What I want is, what is this way? What is this way? What is this way? I only need to see a piece of paper and your calculator on the table, right? No anything else. What is the point? Right? Make you happy.
write your name and your ID on the top. Okay, give you a hand. Are we going to use this? No, we're no. going to use this? Okay, we're going to use this one. Eh? This one is at the receiver. We're going to use expansion formula. You need to give me the steps, how you do it. Uh, not only just the four numbers. Step, 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 step. I know, you're smart. You know the output here, right? You already know that, right? We already, okay, you do the first one first, okay? We, the original input is 4. We compress it, we get 4. So now we transmit this 4, the compressed one. Okay. As the receiver, you receive this 4, then you want to expand to some value. So we want to know the output as the expansion. We already know the output as the compression. So now we want to know the output in the ex expansion. Austin? Who signed the uh, code? Anyone sign the code?
you have inside? No. Let's see on the other. What? We have four, 12 here, we have 14 signatures. Hmm? Jeremy Farmer, Jimo, Vincent, Jillian okay. James, Robert Neal, Justin Sharp, Nicholas Tepley. equals mu mu dash two fifty five. That is the name of the object. Mu dash two fifty five. Okay. What is y? Y is the output of the compression. Oh, so this oh. is uh, at the transmission. So this is the output of the compressed oh. value y. Oh. This one m is the input. Now right? here, must oh, so we're supposed to use the second value. I thought we were supposed to use four, three, two, one again. We're supposed to use the other value. We already done. After, we already done after this point. Yeah, we already done up to this point, so you get this all four values. Next time you do the at the receiver, uh, at the receiver, you need to do the expansion. Oh, which is going to be the right? So once you receive the four, what you get here? But you receive the three point seven nine, what you get here? You expand this. Use the second point. Right? Anybody else? Oh, no. Are you done? 
divided by the input. Right? So look at here, if you are take the, you get the maximum, you still get the four maximum. If you get the minimum one, you still get the minimum, but uh, right, you can see the difference is small. So what is the gain of the compression for this value? You the gain of the system means the output divided by the input, right? So what is the gain for this one? One. one. What is the gain for this one? What is it? 1.26. Everybody got this? Yes or no? Yeah. You have to yes use this one divided by this, right? Okay. Yeah. What is the next one? What's the game for when the input equals 2? 1, 7, 5, right? Okay, what's the game for the last one? 3. Three. You can see. If you get the top score, the raw score, your gain is just one. Okay. Right? If you are a little bit lower, then your gain I multiply by 1.26. And if you are in the middle, you multiply by 1.75. If you are the bottom, you multiply by 3. So it gives you better, right? But you still 
even if you get three, you still the, the bottom. So we do not change the rank. We only change the difference between the maximum and the minimum. That's easy, right? Oh, nine. Not easy? Yeah, that's pretty easy. Too. Okay, pretty easy. Okay, now let's see the output at the expansion. Eh? You already calculated this. We use this 4 as the input. And we know this one equals 4, right? You already calculated that's the first. And the second one, we use this one as the input. <coughs> Your output equals 3, right? 2.99 or something close to 3, yes. What did they say right there? The one you just did? What did they say? This one? No, what did it say? Is this one? Yeah, what did it say? The gain, gain of the compression. Okay. Means the output divided by the input. This one equals 3. And this one will be equals to, eh? you may get 1.99 or something, but anyway, that equals 2. Right? Eh? Back to here. And this one equals a 1. So that is of the output at the expansion. Right. The next one will be the gain of the expansion. What is this? What's the gain for this one? What? One. One. Right. How you get? How you get one? one. Use a four divided by, four. divided by this four, right? Yeah. Right. And what is? The gain of expansion for this way. Three by divided by three point seven nine, right? Seven nine. Equals point seven nine. Right? Then what is the gain for this one? You're going to use a two divided by three point five. So equals what? 1.57, right? No, 1.75. Yeah, 1.2 or 3.75. Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, 2 over 3.75? Yeah, you're going crazy. You're going crazy. You're going to use this number, right? Okay, the, not, next, the last one is 1 divided by, divided by 3, right? This 3. So that's equals 1 third. Uh, Alright, so we good. Hmm? That's every day. Yeah, that is the compression and this one is the expansion. Okay, now we look at the whole system because this is the cascade of these two, right? You compress at the transmitter, then you expand at the receiver. Right? So now we compare the input of the whole communication system and the output of the whole system. For four, you get a four, right? Yeah. So what is the gain for this part? Zero? One. One. What you gain? Oh, input the gain for the, for the whole communication oh, yeah. system. It was one. one, right? Yeah. What is this part? For this value three, what is the gain of your the whole system? One. Still one, right? Use this three, this three divided by this three. Yeah, one. And this one equals one. Yeah. That means we transmit the data without any distortion. All the gains equals one. All pass. Is this good? Or you can get this gain as the gain of the overall. Right? Or you can see, because we have two systems cascade together. So the gain, the total gain will be the multiplication of the two gains. Right? Okay, so this one equals 1 times 1, you get 1 times 1, you get this one. Right? 1 times 2, 6 multiplied by 0 0.79, you also get one. And this one is 1.75 times 0 0.57, still get one. And one times one third, uh, three times one third, still get one. So that is perfect. Any questions on this? So, after you compress something and then you transmit it across a certain medium. Okay, that's good. After the transmission, what do we do next? Suppose uh, I give you four to transmit, you compress to four. I give you three, you, transmit, you compress to this one. Two, you compress this. This one compresses this. What's next? You transmit. You transmit. Anyone? Keep in mind, we are using digital right now. 
This one is still a discrete value, right? You cannot directly transmit through 0.79. What do we do? The, yeah, digital. The topic we discussed last time. What is it? I asked you to answer this at the beginning of today. PCM. PCM. Use PCM. Right? So PCM, and this is a compressed value. You use a uniform. Now, now divided by the R, then convert it into binary, then you transmit. Right? So that is the uh, we erased. It's called the analog compression. Right? So we compress at uh, this point, we compress X. Next time we are going to, we do this first, once we get to this binary, we compress. This is called digital compression and expansion. Topic of next time. Right? Okay, what is the purpose for this uh, non-uniform? As you can see, it's non-uniform. What is the purpose for this non-uniform uh, quantization? To make the dynamic range smaller, right? Okay, let's check this. What's the dynamic range of this one? Four. 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 We use this, we already we said in terms of dB. What dB is this? Right? Dynamic range equals four, it's good. The maximum divided by the minimum. Four or one equals four. We are talking about the voltage, right? So when you take the log of this piece 10, then time is a uh, times what? Convert this ratio into dB. You take the log of this one, multiply by 10. 10. We are talking about the voltage. 20, right? We talk about the power, then you multiply by 10. If we talk about the voltage and the current, you multiply by 20. So what is this one? Equals dB, dr, dr in dB, what's this? Huh? 12. 12, okay, perfect, 12, 12 dB. That means the maximum value is 12 dB higher than the maximum, uh, minimum value. The output of the compression, what is the dynamic range at this point? Hmm? What is it? 1.33. 1 Anyone get this? Where does this come from? 1.33. Do I need to ask somebody? Anyone? How do we get this? Hello? All of you? Okay, going, okay, focus on here. The maximum divided by the minimum. What is it? How we get this? Okay, awesome. Yeah, one three already here. How did you get this? So you buy the maximum by the minimum, right? Yeah, what's the maximum? Could be 3.79. This is the maximum. Then what's the minimum? 3. 3. This one divided by this, not equal to this. You use this one divided by this, not equal to this. Huh? How get this 1.33? This um, is good. Oh, you divided um, the, the V and the VL divided by the um, 3.04. You divided 4 by 3.04. Okay, 4. This one is the maximum, right? Not this one. Why? Look at this one. This is not the maximum. Right? This one with this. And what is this dynamic range in dB? Keep quiet. I will ask somebody. Huh? You know the answer, keep to yourself until I ask you. 
What is the dynamic range in dB for the output of the compression? Don't confuse, okay, power multiplied by 20, what is multiplied by 10? Totally mess up. So why? dB, right? What is B? What does B mean? Means the log of a base 10. What does this D mean? This means what? Times 10. So times 10 is good. Why should we times 20? 
Because when we talk about this one, we always talk about power. Remember, as the thermal noise, the power, everything, we're talking about power. So the dB is uh, low of the, the power 1 over the power 2. Eh? And we multiply by 10, because this 10 is the decimal. This is always true. But sometimes we are talk not talking about the power, we're talking about the voltage. So how power and voltage are related? Power is proportional to voltage squared, right? Yes? Yeah? Or the current squared. P is proportional to current squared. Okay, any one, no matter which one. So if we replace this P with a voltage one, squared, when you divide by R or no matter what, that's proportional, okay? This one squared, and this one is V2 squared, okay? and this one will be a 10 log V1 over V2, then squared. And okay? now this 2 here will move to the front, change it to times 2, right? 2 times 10 equals 20 log the ratio of the voltage. That's why we get uh, if we talk about the voltage, we take the ratio and we multiply by 20. Now, you know this, right? What is the law? The power is proportional to the voltage square. So that is square gives us a 20 instead of 10. Right? Alright, so this one will be equals a 2.4, uh, sorry, 2.5 dB. Right? What is the purpose for this compression expansion? We bother all this, I bother you for this whole lecture, right? What's the purpose of this? <coughs> Increase the signal to noise ratio for small signals. Eh? We, we don't check this right now. The other purpose is uh, reduce the dynamic range of the original data. The original data is uh, dynamic range is 12. Now the compressor is 2.5. This reduction is uh, what is the reduce? This one minus this, eh? because 9.5 dB. This reduction is called a compression. Uh, okay. eh? It's compression reach. reach. So that means the dynamic range is reduced by 9.5 dB. So I'm guessing um, you're trying to fit like a certain amount of data within like a certain number of bits. Mm -hmm. like, for, for example, like this. Suppose uh, you have a mid term score, right? The highest equals 100, the lowest equals, for example, 5. Huh? So I need to use a 3 digits to record all this, right? 5, 15, or something, okay, 100. So I need to use a 3 digit. So the maximum is 100, the minimum is 5, so the dynamic range equals 20 here. But uh, I don't have enough space. I can only use one digit to represent this. For example, my dynamic range is only like, uh, for example, two. Cannot give me 20. So I only have one space to represent your score. I need to compress you. So for example, I can compress your 100 into nine, and compress your file into, for example, three. So everybody gets a number with only one digit. So the dynamic range, for example, uh, the maximum is 9, the minimum is equals, uh, for example, 4. Eh? Then 9 over 4 equals 2. So the maximum is only is 2, instead of the 20. But when you compress it, there is some... Then this one definitely not, uh, not for this curving, for this uh, score, that's why. Okay, 9, I'll give you A. 4, I'll give you a C or D, right? But in this case, when you receive the data, we don't know. We need to know the original data, so we need to expand this. You need to expand your 9 back into 100. You need to ex expand your 4 back into 5. So that is it. But there's going to be some loss of data. Right? Well, some loss here, uh, it really depends. In this case, it looks like we don't have any loss. Right? The loss is only your calculation error, for example. It's supposed to be 1 third, 0 0.3333, but you said, OK? Then we carry this out, okay, the, the recovery is 2.99 instead of 3. The actual is 3, but that is only calculation error. So that basically, we do not have any compression error here for this one. Okay? We are going to discuss compression error a little time, but not this. That's it for next class. Does that make sense? So for the, after this compression expansion process, we can transmit the data 
of a higher dynamic range with a communication channel that has smaller dynamic range. And like this, this I need 12 dynamic range. But if you have a channel that the dynamic range is only 5 dB, then we cannot transmit all this. Right? Because this one is too small compared to 4, or this one is too large compared to 1. Does that make sense? What we can do is we compress this one, and then we transmit with this one. Right? The maximum is 4, the minimum is 3. And now the dynamic range is only 2.5 dB. So that's perfect, we can transmit this. Any questions on this? And this is called compression rate. Right? The dynamic, the change or the reduction of the dynamic range. Any further questions on this? So can you do it by yourself? Right. If you can do all these followers, then you need only like 10 minutes to review after the class. If you still cannot do this, maybe you need one hour to, to practice by yourself. So that is the benefit you pay attention in class. Right. Don't do anything else. Otherwise, you are going to waste your time. Right. Okay. Yeah, sure, definitely. Right. Thank you, that's all. Uh, I'm going to turn around to the IP, I'm going to get to my numbers. I wrote my number to call you. Oh, <laughs>